What's up guys, today is Thursday, which makes it Theory Thursday. So, what are we doing today? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the cage system. I call it the cage system, minus the D. I know if you Google it, you're going to have to put in caged with a D at the end. Uh, that's not correct. I'll explain why during this video. So, before we get to all that, please subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, leave a comment if you want me to work on something particular. It helps a lot. And here we go. So, as you can see on the graph here, we have caged spelled out. Forget the D. The reason why is it's only part of another C. And I'll explain that towards the end of this, but this is the idea. You can get the same chord using each of these shapes as you move up the neck. And the shapes use basic shapes that you already know. So, for example, if you already know C, and you already know A, and you already know G. You're going to be able to play all of these. The, the hard part about this is, of course, barring. And I know that's everybody's plague is the bar chord. But in, in this process, you have to be able to use the bar chord. So it's a good time to start practicing it. The idea here is this. If I play a C down here, if I start on the third fret as my root and do an A shape, that's also a C. And if I start up here and play the top of that A shape with my first finger and somehow build a G, which is almost impossible, so don't really worry about this one too much, that is also a C. And if I move up to where that C was and I play an E shape, that's also a C. Now they're going to tell you from here you can play a D shape and make that a C as well. You can. That's really not how this all works. That D is really just part of another C. If you look over at the graph here, that last chord shape, even though they say it's D over here, if you look beyond it towards the end of the guitar neck, so down here, you'll see that it is the C shape. So really the D shape doesn't exist, it's just another C shape. So with that being said, it's only four chords you really need to know and use, and this helps you get different sounds and tones that you may in, have not had available to you. So, I'll explain that now. As we were just saying, we've got the cage system and here is what it sounds like. You've got a C chord. Now we're going to take the A shape, and like I mentioned last week, and put your finger down and slide that bar up to the third fret where you have your C. And you're going to add the rest of that chord and so you're going to get it A shape, but it's going to sound like a C. So from our A shape, we have the top of it here, which is the bottom of our G shape. So you can see that here in the diagram, right about there. The bottom of that G are the same three notes as the top of that A. Right? I wish I could reach out and around for you, but I can't. So, that's this right here. Right, so you just went from here, to here, to here. And now, the E shape's your next one. Now they say there's a D shape afterwards, and I don't really buy into that. The reason why is it's just another C shape up there. This right here is just a C shape. The reason it doesn't look the same is because you're used to seeing it with the open nut holding those two fingers for you, but the D shape is really just a C shape missing some of its information. So I'm looking down here a lot because I want to make sure that it's clear that I'm showing you what I'm showing you. I do care about the camera up there. Um, so, 
All you're doing here when you do a D is you're just moving up. And if you were to really build out a D chord, you'd build it like that and it would look like a C chord. Right? So, that's really the idea of the cage system. It's fairly simple. Uh, I don't believe the D part is correct. I mean, I do understand, yes, it is a chord that you could play up here like this. Uh, but you never would. You play it down here only because there's a D right there. And so somebody was like, why play it like this when I could just play it like this? But if you listen to it, it sounds better like this than like this. Because it's fuller, right? You have a big spread with a low third, which sounds great. You don't really need to repeat two thirds, but eh, we'll get into logistics on theory another time. So that's the idea. And, and really you can take this system and move it anywhere. So you're starting with C, but like I just said, if you moved up here and it was D, you could do the same thing. If you wanted a D chord as a bar chord, it's an A shape right there. Or it's a G shape if you really want to do this one. I don't ever do this one. I do the top of the A shape. But I don't ever really play the full chord. It's not really worth it. Uh, it's too big of a stretch and you're never going to get to it. Um, and then your E shape. D up here and the E and the A shapes are really easy to remember because as long as you memorize these two strings the E and A string you're just creating a capo underneath an E chord or an A chord so you're taking that A chord and you're just creating a capo wherever you want to make the chord you want to make an E on an A shape seventh fret is E I'm creating an A chord, and there it is. So, an F chord is just an E shape, a G chord like that is just an E shape. Uh, a lot of these bar chords that you already know are just E shapes that have been turned into bar chords. Uh, in fact, every bar chord you've ever played is one of these cage things. So. That's why the caged system exists. Again, it shouldn't be called caged. Nobody uses the D thing as a D. Nobody plays this voicing. That's just a crazy voicing. Maybe somebody does, I don't know. If you do, write in the comments below. I'm like, that's my favorite voicing, man. Don't knock my favorite voicing. That's cool. That's cool, man. I respect that. Um, yeah, any questions, put them below. Hopefully I covered everything. It's it's different teaching to a camera versus a person asking questions. But ask questions below. I'll do another video on it. Until next time, happy Thursday.